been giving this a lot of thought. It's about a bit of a passion project, and I think if you've watched my videos, you've noticed um, that I talk about this, and today's topic is going to be skin tones, specifically non-Caucasian skin tones, uh, when it comes to alcohol markers. And uh, I went through my collection and swatched every brown I thought would work for a good non-Caucasian skin tone. So we've got Prismacolors right here with PB95, PB276, uh, PB65, PB90, PB200, PB62, PB214, and PB213. And um, if you can't if you can't follow along, don't worry. Um, there's going to be a blog post with this information as well, and um, I will try to list the markers used in the description below the video. So next we have, and this is, um, I actually haven't explored pro and brush markers very fully yet. These are the ones that I own that seem like they would make good skin tones for um, non-Caucasian skin. Uh, oh, 345-0535-R937 as like a blush or even a skin tone. It's a nice rosy shade. 0837-0427. From Blick Studio Brush Markers, um, again, I don't own every marker they have, um, but these are some of the ones that I do own that made good, look like they would make for good skin tones. 002-091-086-046. 047 and 050. Now, Copic, I have a pretty extensive collection of Copic sketches. I try to buy a wide range of their browns. I try to buy a lot of browns that would work for skin tones. Um, and Copic actually is kind of disappointing. Uh, given how large my collection is, how difficult it is to find good skin tones. Ones that I did find were E37, E27, E79, E59, E49, E47, E17, E13, E34, E23, with E71 maybe being like a good um, base skin tone, E14 being perhaps good for um, like lips, blush, and cheeks, and RO2 being really kind of too hot to work with this color palette for the most part. So I also have my character Naomi from 7 Inch Kara. And I thought I would render her for you guys while I talk about how I think about other skin tones. And a disclaimer, I am not claiming to be an expert by any means. Um, I am still very much learning. This is something I care about and I'd like to improve upon. And I'd like to see other artists push themselves to include more diversity in their comics and their illustration. And I thought to further that goal, I should share the information that I have with you guys, and if more artists share their information, maybe we can all improve together. So I'm going to get started with Naomi here. Before I actually delve into Naomi, I, I realized I didn't talk about um, like blush color and also um, shading. So for lips or blush, Blix uh, 012 wine or 046 Dark Umber are both really nice, rich, reddish tones that aren't overwhelmingly red. Um, and for shading, RV99, V99, V28, and V09 all seem like they would be excellent choices for shading darker skin tones. All right, so I went ahead and I cut out a frisket mask and um, I also wiped it down with rubbing alcohol to get rid of the excess um, ink because even though I used a Copic multiliner, it's getting all over my hands and I don't want that transferring when I uh, use a Copic wide to do the background. So, ha, got it started. I will go ahead and apply the frisket which is being a little finicky actually I might have I maybe should have like cut it in the parts I've done that before and liked the result I also would like it if someone would invent a t like a toned frisket so you could more easily see it when you put it down because this is absolutely clear um, and that just makes application a little harder because I can't see what I'm doing so I'm gonna apply this and I'll get back to you guys Okay, so I've got my frisket on, and as you can see, there is some bubbling, but that's actually not make or break, because all you really want is to cover, to mask off the area. Um, it will sort of uh, put a speed bump in the way of 
my marker, which is, I mean, not the greatest thing ever, but um, it's, it's fine. Oh, and if you're curious, I am using Jerry Arter, Jerry's Artorama Union Square Heavy Drawing Paper for this, so this is also kind of like a marker, uh, a paper test. So we've got a nice basic wash going on and you can even use a spray mist on top of it to um, sort of help. Let me see, I'm pretty sure I have a B34, yeah, B34 through the B32 spray mist, so. And that'll also help uh, sort of hide or uh, randomize the lines in the background. And then when that's dry, you can either, um, you could use a darker color if you want for a kind of like that stratospheric blue effect, or you can use um, a marker for that. And I will probably use a marker for that. So I'm gonna let this dry. All right, so it looks like my alcohol ink is mostly dry and I can start applying other colors. And I have um, sort of a set collection of blues that I like to use for skies. Um, B32, which I already put down, B24, FB2, and B29. And I'm not even going to remove the frisket yet. Now, if I had these colors in Copic Wides, and I'd probably have to make them myself, because the Copic Wide Library is a little limited, and most of the wides I own are, are you know, self-assembled. Um, if I had these in Copic Wide, I would be doing this in the wide as well, but I don't have them. And I'm being kind of um, lackadaisical about this because I'm going to give this another spritz with the, um, the, the blue uh, B32 to sort of blend out any lines or streaking. And once you have the right colors and you know how to use a mask or a frisket, doing skies suddenly becomes very easy to do and kind of satisfying too. Because they look good and don't require a whole lot of effort. So then I'm gonna do my next color, which is FB2, and FB is a fluorescent. And I'm gonna blend that back out with B24, just a little bit. And you see how quick I can now work because I have that mask down. And stratospheric blue right at the top. And blend that out with our fluorescent blue. Yeah, it's fluorescent blue dull. And then blend that out with B24. Then I'm gonna reach for my blue mister, which I refilled. Give the top half another spritz. And step away. And if you don't have uh, pre-fill uh, misters, that you've assembled yourself, you can use the Copic airbrush system if, if you have that. Um, Tim Holtz also makes kind of like a, a squeeze action airbrush, which I'd like to get my hands on as they're pretty affordable um, and they work with a variety of markers. Um, I just haven't yet. So if you're interested in seeing me review something like that, one of the ways you can help make that happen is by uh, contributing to my Patreon and um, making a special request because Patreon backers get um, priority. Um, so I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to clean off my table because it's kind of a mess even if you can't see it. All right, table is clean and although my ink isn't 100% dry, it's mostly pulled up up there, um, I think I'm ready to remove it. And I used to have a knife on my tabletop for this. And uh, I actually know where it is, but it's under the table. The cat knocked it down. So I will use a pair of scissors to gently get under my frisket. Oh, and you see, I had some problems. So where I connected it, 
because I'd sprayed it so much it actually seeped under because I didn't do a very good job of sealing that so um, there's a few things you can do about that you can use like colorless blender to push it to the back of the paper um, what I will probably do when I decide on her dress color um, I'll probably decide then whether or not I want to push it all the way um, back with colorless blender or if I want to um, work with it really depends on the dress color and where it's pooled you need to be careful to work so that the pool of ink is in the middle and then discard your frisket so that's how I do skies it's pretty simple only requires four colors b32 b24 fb2 b29 you honestly don't even need that many colors um, and having masking uh, frisket really helps in fact since I'm here I will go ahead and start pushing some of that blue back and this method isn't going to remove all of the blue it just uh, makes it less prominent and um, I really did soak the paper, but it didn't bleed through too, too badly, which is nice considering this is kind of like a, a I was looking to see if they had um, little sketchbooks of um, mixed media paper. This is just heavy drawing paper um, and it's taking the marker pretty well. So I'm pretty pleased with that so far. Now I will push the blue back on my Magnolia because I'm not yet sure what I want to do about that. And the, satur the seepage is from me oversaturating. It's not actually the fault of the paper or the fault of the masking fluid. Oh, for some reason the masking fluid left a residue on the paper, which is sticking in my hand. So I've already swatched out and um, done some thinking about how I'm going to handle her skin. And I'm going to start with an all over application of 090, wait, is it 091 that I want? Yeah, 091, which is sepia. I used to use mushroom, but mushroom is a little light. It's a little harder for me to um, sort of blend my tones together. Although sepia might be kind of dark. We'll find out. This heavyweight drawing paper um, doesn't have a coating on the surface and it does have a tooth. So it's a little bit like rendering on um, a thinner watercolor paper. So if you enjoy markering on watercolor paper, I do, um, you might enjoy this paper. The only issue with that is um, it does cause streaking because it is so thirsty it's hard to get even coverage and I'm not all that concerned with that at this point because there's going to be multiple layers. I'm just bringing it up because if you're someone who likes to work light or with light layers um, you may find this paper more difficult to work with. And as almost always, this was inked with a Sailor Mitsuo Ida brush. Um, it's one of the few brush pins I've found that will work with Copics and handles um, the way I like a brush pin to handle, so I'm very satisfied with it. If you'd like to know more about that, you can read the blog post review I wrote about that um, particular brand of brush pin a while back on my blog, netosoup.blogspot.com. And the annotation here should take you to the link to the should take you to that post. So that's our first layer of sepia. It actually appears more streaky on camera than it is in real life, but it is pretty streaky. Um, I actually want to apply some of the underlying blush and lipstick color well not lipstick but lip colors at this point 
so they'll be nice and um, integrated into her skin. And I'm using E04 for that. And I apply E04 along her cheeks and the bridge of her nose, above her eyes, um, the tips of her ears and the insides of her ears, her lips, under her neck, the palms of her hands, the tips of her fingers, her elbows. And um, I'm going to switch now to O12 Wine, which is a Blick Studio brush marker. And if you find uh, that color a little too dark, you can knock it back with um, E04 Natural Lipstick if you have it. And actually looks darker on camera than it is. So now it's time for me to start knocking in some of the shadows or the zones of the face. Um, and what I like to do is use the color I just used to um, saturate the whole of the face to sort of create like a domino mask. Uh, think about like uh, what Robin wears, for example, or like a raccoon's mask. I do this for everybody. Um, because th that's part of the face that would be in shadow. And then I would also finish, or I'm also finishing delineating the nose a bit more and rendering the sides of the face. I'm also going to do her lower lip which will push that red back some but um i want that and i need to do the insides of her ears and see this color sepia 009 um which is a blick color it dries a lot lighter than it initially goes down so don't let it scare you it's not going to be like this massive color difference between my first layer and where I put down shadow. And as the colors dry, you can continue to build them up. And I recommend blocking in your large areas of shadow first. Um, so like this whole part of the arm, this arm here, the majority of her neck, because that'll give it time to dry and it'll give you time to decide if you want to continue to build up those shadows or if you want to um, just sort of leave them as they are. And if you notice your blush is um, getting knocked too far back or you're losing it and you'd like to retain it, you can always go back and add more. Um, just be careful because a lighter color will displace the darker color and it might look um, a little bit odd. I really need to invest in some kind of earthy pinks and lighter reds that would allow me to build that up without losing the intensity of color. Now I can move on to the next color in my lineup, 002, another Blick color. And if you find this to be too much of a contrast when it's dry, you can always use the lighter color you just laid down, uh, 091, to um, sort of push it back a little bit. Of course, with Copics and most alcohol markers, they do go down a little bit darker and dry a little bit lighter. So I wouldn't rush to fix something until you have a good idea of what the dry color is going to look like. Nice thing about alcohol markers is that they will reactivate the color you put down before. They're like infinitely reworkable. So um, you can always fix things, lighten them up, darken them.
Now I'm switching to Prismacolor with Light Umber 70%. And now um, sepia, which is PB62. And I've said this in prior videos, but if you are like me and you love working with lots of colors, you may have trouble um, getting enough saturation or well, not really, wait, you may have trouble pulling distinct lines, sorry. But on paper like this, you may also have trouble getting enough saturation. Um, and so if you want to pull distinct lines instead of um, blended lines, then you need to allow the paper to dry and the ink to absorb before you add another color. And right now, I'm gonna go ahead and add um, some neutral shading in the form of V99 and RV99 in Copic. So, Aubergine and Argyle Purple. And if you find the contrast between the browns you've put down and the color you're using for your contrasting shadow color is too great, you can always go back with one of the lightest browns you've used um, and just sort of push that purple color back a little bit. And now for the last um, skin tone, E49 Dark Bark. So let's see if that bled through. No, not really. This paper takes marker surprisingly well. So um, that's how I render Naomi's skin. Um, there are a variety of ways to render a variety of skin tones and um, you need to experiment until you find ones that work for you. Um, on other types of paper that have more of a coating, we wouldn't have as much of an issue with the streaking and it's more visible on camera than it actually is in real life, but we would have less of an issue with the streaking that we're getting on our forehead and on our cheeks. That's due to lack of saturation. If you really want that to not happen at all and you don't necessarily want to go even darker with the skin tone, um, you can apply um, a more peach color like a desaturated peach or a warm a light warm gray like uh, w1 or w2 just to pre-saturate the paper so you don't have as much streaking and she has hazel eyes which are sometimes difficult to do in marker because um it would be hard to get the the very light browns in there with watercolor i could just add a very light like an umber tint and it would be just perfect for her eyes. So I might actually have to pull out watercolors in order to get the perfect color for her eyes. I really kind of want to go with like a chartreuse for her dress, but that might actually be a mistake to do that. For those of you wondering, um, the way I like to render her hair is um, I like to start out with a lighter color and then um, that allows for like highlights. So I'll do like a full saturation or an almost full saturation with a lighter brown and then move to a darker brown. Um, and this paper combined with kind of how gummy Prismacolor markers can be, it's really trying to grab the nib. So it's um, hard for me to do the sort of scrubby technique I like to do because Naomi has beautiful curly hair that's a lot of fun to paint well paint or marker I <laughs> I paint her a lot I might even go with a red because the red would really pop with her eyes and her skin color and the background 
I know every creator thinks their characters are just the most beautiful, precious cinnamon buns under the sun, but I really do, I really do like Naomi's character design. And um, now that I've found a combination of colors that work really well for her skin, um, I hope I will be drawing more of her. So I only left a little bit of white in her hair and that's what the sun's catching on. So that's the highlight. Then I like to move to a much darker color. Oh, it's really gonna grab onto the paper and start doing sort of like curly cues. Let me zoom in for you guys. And there are loads of ways to render hair. I really recommend you Google around and you draw and render from reference so you can get a hang for different hair types. Last year I did the OC challenge with Naomi in April, so I got to draw her with all kinds of different hair uh, styles and in different outfits, and it was a lot of fun. It really helped me get to know my character better, which was great because it gave me a lot of stuff to use in the story. And I even think uh, I'm going to do an, enti an entire chapter of Seven Inch Care that's just about Naomi because she's um, attending a new school. Um, she'd gone to a private school previously and now she's in a small town public school. So I'm sure that's a pretty big transition that I'd like to explore with her as a character. And I think it would also uh, just develop her as a person to the readers. That's important to me because even though the title is Seven Inch Kara, that's more because I'm not very good at coming up with titles. The story is also about Naomi and her growing up and becoming an adult. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to um, the shadow color, but I also want to find some darker browns for her hair or maybe even a black for her hair because I want more contrast between her hair and her skin. So I have Blix Warm Black and I also have Copics Warm Gray 10 and Warm Gray 9. I hadn't even thought to pull out my uh, my tinted grays and blacks to test these. It was I was just thinking like skin tones mostly. So that's warm black, and that is indeed it's a lot it's a lot lighter than a true black, but um, it's a really nice color. And then that's W nine, and that's a Copic. And that's W10. So all three of those are great colors. Um, they could be useful for skin tone, but they might also be good for hair. Depends on what your what what your character looks like or the person you're trying to render, um, what their colors look like. Um, but I was going to do that shadow color RV99 first, and you can even with hair um, if you're going for dark hair, you can even do like a blue violet or a dark, um, let's see, did I swatch eggplant? I really did, what, oh, eggplant's actually a lot lighter than the cap would have you believe. So I guess I'm gonna move over to blue violet and go with deep reddish blue. Of course I have to swatch that first cause you know, we can't always trust the cap. See, that's that's a light color too. It's a little darker though than V28. But I think I am gonna go with it. I have found that when designing characters, um, contrast really helps make them pop visually on the page. Um, so I like to keep Naomi's hair a, 
a lot darker than her skin so that her face kind of because she has like she has like beautiful long hair lots of volume um so I don't want her face to get lost in it so I need to make sure I push the contrast which can sometimes be difficult with dark colors with markers because um, we don't always have the range we would like to have and we don't always they don't always offer the colors we would need so now I'm gonna move on over to 052 warm black in Blick you know and here if I can leave white as the highlight instead of applying white um, I'd rather do that. It looks um, more natural to the piece. And now I'm going to switch over to W10 after this is dry um, for the final shading in her hair. So I am... I think I will do her dress in red and then I might draw a pattern on it afterwards because that seems to be where my art is these days <laughs> is small all over patterns are kind of my my jam right now and um, honestly that is too purple for a magnolia magnolias are very white but um, I can go back and use opaque white to sort of knock that back a bit or um, I could just leave it as is because I mean it's an illustration it's not meant to be an accurate representation of life and if you guys will excuse me I'm gonna quickly swatch some reds for her dress all right so I've got my reds picked out and I have them in order that I'm going to use them in And uh, if you guys have somehow missed my numerous messages, let me repeat that um, I personally think you should always swatch your, your markers before you use them. Um, partially because it'll help you solidify a color palette so you're not trying to make decisions on the fly. Doing that is bad news. Um, when I do it, I sh shouldn't be doing it. I should have made my palette ahead of time, but I didn't. Um, and uh, if you can, you should also try swatching on the paper you're using because coated and uncoated papers, papers with different levels of absorbency, they all reflect the colors differently. And something that might look really dark on a coated cardstock like uh, Expressive Blending Paper, for example, might look really desaturated on um, a watercolor paper or um, a paper like this because without the coating, the the inks sink into the paper instead of sitting kind of on top of the paper and so the, there's less room for the light to bounce around between your color and your paper. Um, that's when, when people talk about luminous watercolors, that's what they're talking about is the bouncing between the light and the paper and the pigments. So um, my first layer is pretty um, scratchy, pretty uh, streaky. That's the word I'm looking for. But you guys know I don't work in just one layer. So I'm using the same color, which is R35 Coral in uh, Copic markers to kind of darken the colors up. This is a really good color on Naomi because it's a very pink red. It's a very young kind of teenage color. Definitely a color I can see her wearing. And the nice thing about red is red has high staining power, so hopefully it will eliminate that blue. And if not, the pattern that I'm going to put on the, on the dress is going to be distracting enough that you won't really notice the blue anymore. I think that is saturated enough that I can move on to the next color, R27 Cadmium Red. Or, as it's called around this apartment, Catmium, because my cat insists on drinking watercolor water and uh, chewing on tubes of paint if he can get a hold of them. He is very insistent that the watercolor water is the most delicious of all the waters. 
he's ever had, given how hard it is to shoo him away from it. And that was Lipstick Red. And now I'm moving on to R39, which is Garnet. And we're almost done with this. All I have left to do is color her ring and her exercise bracelet of unmentioned brand. I'm pretty sure her exercise bracelet is like a hot pink in on the cover of chapter six. So I'll try to be consistent and stick with that. So for markers, pretty much all we have left now is the hair and going over her eyebrows. And I'm using W10. Which is almost black, but not quite. For very curly hair like Naomi's, just think about drawing tiny little fluffy, fluffy clouds when you're moving your brush. Now if you absolutely do need to, you can, I don't have any black in there. <laughs> Duh. I have it over here. I have, ooh, I have two warm black apparently. So that means this one goes in towards my giveaway because it's such a nice color. I'm going to use, let's see, special black, I think. Just because I want a little more contrast between her hair and her face. Although that might not be possible on this paper because this paper sort of grays colors out a little bit. Which is what it looks like is happening here. it for the markers let me go grab my color pencils all right so I've got some color pencils and these happen to be spectrum noir uh, the floral set mostly because they have like these really nice pinks and reds um, and I wanted to add a little more color to her lips a little hard to get out though And um, if you're having a hard time, if you're losing sort of um, like delicate blushes on darker skin tones, uh, you can always apply them afterwards using color pencils. Sort of build them back up again. Oh, sorry. Did not mean to boop. Ugh, it's not the right color. Still getting kind of used to this set. And the colors sometimes don't match. I'm gonna have to go back over this. And the interior of her mouth needs to be a lot darker. Alright, 
Let's give these Soho color pencils a crack. So far, I wouldn't go so far as to say the Soho color pencils are creamy. Um, they're a little sandy and gritty, but that's actually fine on this paper. I mean, if you want creamy color pencils, you really should be looking towards Derwent's Color Soft. Um, unfortunately, those are not available open stock. Or is there hard to find open stock? I don't know that I have seen them open stock in a couple of years, which is a shame. Because I like Derwin's products. Alright guys, so, um... That was a basic demonstration of how I render one skin tone out of the hundreds of thousands that are available, um, as well as uh, sort of like a little very basic review of Jerry's um, Union Square uh, drawing paper mini sketchbook. Um, it took the Copics pretty well. Um, it has enough tooth to be nice for color pencils. Um, in general, it performs like a um, thin mixed media paper. I don't know if I'd go so far as to use watercolors on it because I think it would buckle like crazy, but you know me, I'm going to have to use watercolors on it so I can report back to you guys. So, um, I'm Becca Hilburn. This video was made thanks to the generosity of my backers on Patreon. Um, they have unlocked the one additional um, watercolor or marker tutorial per month tier. So uh, this video is thanks to their generosity. Thank you so much, guys. If you're interested in becoming a backer, please uh, check out uh, patreon.com slash natosoup. And if you're interested in more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel and reading my blog. It has... Um, like six years of content similar to this on it. I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye guys.